All right, it is 5.30, so I will call this meeting to order and I ask Sandra to record the attendance. Um, welcome back everybody, happy 2022. Um, if you haven't yet had a chance to review the agenda for tonight's meeting, I'd ask that you do so now and then I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I move to approve uh, tonight's agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, moving on to Article 3, approval of the minutes of the November 16, 2021 meeting. Please take a moment to look through these minutes. And if you have no questions or corrections, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the November 16, 2021 meeting. I do have a correction. Yes, sir. Article 6, it's on page 4. First, a full paragraph. Uh, the whole paragraph, uh, just reading through it, is a little confusing. But what caught me the most was Member Stefan re emphasized that he doesn't believe this falls under the DDA and should be handled by the Planning Commission as there is no longer a pandemic. I'm quite sure I never said that there was not a pandemic. <laughs> right. So, but again, just reading through the whole paragraph, it, it doesn't flow. It's like there's almost like two different topics being talked about in there. And I can't separate it to figure out what's going on. Shall we table these minutes and ask that they be reviewed with the transcript and then updated for our next meeting? Yep, that would be great. Thank you. Anyone have any objection to that? Would Good. someone like to make a motion to table the approval of the minutes? I make a motion to table the approval of the minutes. Support? Second. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, moving on. Uh, Article four, acknowledge visitors and those wishing to speak to non-agenda items. We have a visitor. So if you have a non-agenda item you'd like to speak on, please come forward. I think- Okay, um, I think there might be an agenda right there. Yeah, we, I think I'm number nine. Are you number nine? Strategic plan update? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well. Do we want him to give a presentation during that uh, time or shall we have him give it now? Oh, I'll leave it up to the board. Strategic plan committee, do you have a preference? All right, I'm happy to have you participate now. Go ahead and- All right. Well, actually, you know your what? Presentation. Do you have- um... I do, I have, uh, well, I have some things to pass out. Okay. So my name is Chris Corey. I'm with McKenna and uh, we're proud to be assisting the advisory committee for the steering direction for strategic plan. Um, which also will move forward for all you folks, as well as planning commission and board, etc. What I'm passing out right now is the partial or preliminary results from the community survey uh, that the advisory uh, committee put out. Um, this is partial at this point, partially because the survey is not closed yet. Um, we're still have another week and a half before it closes, but also because uh, township staff has several hundred more paper copies that still have to be entered into the system. Um, but this is at 1,359 responses. We do expect by the time all is said and done that we'll have right around 2,000. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, I see that as pretty successful in terms of response rate. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to walk you through all of the demographics unless you want me to, uh, except to say that we have a pretty good representation of the township uh, population wise, at least as far as people over 18 go. Um, obviously, we don't have a ton of, we have a non zero, but it's very small number of responses from people under 18. But over 18, we have a, a pretty good age distribution. Uh, we have a pretty solid. Um, geographic distribution, uh, which is on page two. We can see we uh, divided the community into regions and asked people where they lived. And um, again, those those are those percentages are pretty good based on the actual population of those regions, which are not equal. Um, we've also had quite a few people say they are interested in participating in the next few phases of public engagement, which will include focus groups, uh, will include a community open, open house, and will include more targeted specific topic surveys. Um, that will go out to people who said they were interested in uh, talking more about that topic. So um, we're kind of excited about this. 
uh, public engagement strategy where we go broadly and then become more focused. And we're hoping this is really going to help provide you folks as well as the other boards and commissions and staff with a really nice picture of what it is the community wants you to be doing um, and, and how uh, you can sort of proceed with that. Um, our initial uh, report here actually brings up a few things that I think are very important to the DDA. Um, if you look at the top five issues of concern, which are on page three, uh, the township priorities um, and the top assets, you can see some DDA related topics in there, particularly in the issues of concern and in the priorities. Uh, number one priority right now, according to the survey, is to create a downtown village. Obviously, we have a downtown, we have a village, but to really uh, build that into something that the community, um, you know, it really sees as, as, a, as a social and economic center, that's your task already. The public is saying, at least this thus far, that's priority number one. Um, which which uh, it puts some pressure on you guys, but also you have the jurisdiction and the resources to be able to make that happen. Um, and we're hoping through this process to really get into some details of how we can do that. Um, I think it's also worth noting that on issues of concern, the number two issue of concern is the lack of a village area. So uh, it can't even on both, on both of those. Um, there are some other aspects in here, I think that also might fall under your jurisdiction should you sort of choose to bring them under your jurisdiction. Uh, like traffic speeding, which is the number one issue of concern. Um, obviously, you only have your jurisdiction with your in your DDA boundary, but you can work with the road commission, work with MDOT, and make some road changes, right? Um, if that's something that you are, as a group, interested in doing, it is within your power. Um, and it, you may be more empowered to do that than, to say, the township board because of your unique roles at DDA. So um, that's another one. Um, there's also talk about preserving the river, which again falls into your category. You know, there's parks things in here. Again, something you can help with. So there's a lot that um, the public is sort of leaning on you as the DDA here without knowing it, saying, hey, we want this stuff done. And it's a lot of stuff that you really uh, are able to do. So um, that's the initial takeaway for you folks. Um, that the, the uh, We'll see what happens when we get to 2000. I don't expect this to look dramatically different, but you know we may have a few changes here or there. Um, we are planning to be back in March for a more formal and uh, thorough workshop um, to talk about uh, the priorities of the DDA in light of the public engagement. Um, then we're gonna go back to the public again, and then we'll come back to you guys again um, to, uh, before we finalize the strategic plan. So with that, do you folks have any questions or anything like that? I have a clarification question based on what you just concluded with. So yeah. you, do I understand that you'll have a more robust report for us for our March DDA meeting where yeah. you'll give us a, you know, a full summary of the, of the survey responses and then we can yes. discuss? Yes, and okay. then I'll have, um, we'd like to be at that point a, a more formal agenda item where we spend some time talking through your opportunities to address what the public is asking for so that you can basically to create your first draft of the downtown DDA portion of the strategic plan, which will be taken back to the public for feedback, then brought back to, oops, me, to you to finalize. Um, but we are, that's going to happen in March and then the second meeting will be a few months after. That. And can you give us an idea of the, the timeline for the rest of step, the steps for the strategic planning process, just so we know how far down the road mm -hmm. we're looking before we can actually embark on some of those projects. Sure. Uh, well, the first thing I'd say is that, you know, if we feel like there's consensus that these things, certain things should be pursued, there's no reason to wait for the strategic planning process to conclude if we're ready to move forward with things. That said, um, here's kind of what we're looking at over the next few months. Uh, the survey closes at the end of January. Um, we will be compiling and finalizing those results. We will be um, strategizing our next round of public engagement, which will, like I said, will include focus groups on specific topics. The topics chosen by the public as part of this survey. We'll be reaching out to people who said they wanted to participate, getting that all set up. That's kind of going to go through February. In March, we will be um, attending board and commission meetings like this one, um, where we will have uh, workshops to to make that, like I said, first draft 
of your strategic priorities as a DDA board. We'll do that with the Township Board, we'll do it with the Planning Commission, we'll do it with Parks and Rec, and then we'll sort of compile that into a first draft. Uh, then uh, following that is when we'll actually going to hold the various public engagement uh, activities and meetings that we've been we've been planning. Uh, so that'll go kind of March, April ish. Uh, following that in sort of May, June is when we'll be back again to talk final uh, prioritization with you guys, at which point then we'll draft the strategic plan, which we are not envisioning being a long or complex document. It's basically going to be this is what we're going to do because the public said this is what they wanted. So that will not be a long process. What we will hopefully at that point be able to do is start to dive into, this is what we're gonna do and this is how we're gonna do it. I know you folks have had a lot, um, there's been a lot of planning work done around 28th Street, around the village area. Um, and so it strikes me as we're hoping that this process can sort of focus it, focus in on, okay, what are the things that we need to implement and how are we gonna do that? Um, and uh, obviously we're, we have a kind of work you know, prepared to help through this process and beyond. So, so are you anticipating having a finalized plan then in like August or? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we hopefully have we'll hopefully have a final like a final full draft well before that, more like June. Okay. As far as final adoption and stuff, yeah, we're probably looking at July, August. You know, at that point we'll have public hearing and the board will have to have their say, et cetera, and they'll have the final adoption. That's really helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions. Um, I guess one question I have is you said there's about a thousand respondents right now, correct? Uh, um, 1,300. 1,300, yeah. and then you have about a thousand in paper form, correct? Uh, I'd say we have, uh, what I'm hearing from Ben is uh, several hundred in several paper form, hundred. and we are expected to continue to get responses over the next week and a half. That's where I got about 2,000 from. And then do we get like visibility potentially in February of saying, hey, have we seen a shift just because people who engage digitally versus um, people who engage via paper form, you could see a huge shift in demographics um, because yeah. of that, which could shift priorities on, on the sheet. So just kind of how is there, do we have the ability to, to kind of look at the data that, mm -hmm. from the paper respondents say in February to make sure we aren't missing something that we're being very representative of the community. Absolutely. So I think I'm not sure that we're going to, um, well, we weren't planning to cross tab out the paper respondents specifically, mm -hmm. but we are planning to cross tab by age and geography. So we will know if, and, and so we do a final report, we'll say, Hey, people over 60, they said these, are, these were their priorities and people under 40 said they were these, they had these priorities mm -hmm. and we'll see if those are the same. And we'll see who's sort of driving the the overall the top line number. Um, Is it feasible to get an updated? That's more report where I'm, <coughs> I'm time, going at. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In time uh, for next. Yes, reporting. absolutely. Okay. We can get. We can provide. We'll we'll make sure our final report is ready so it can come to your February meeting. That would be terrific. Thank you. And that gives us hopefully then something to be a little bit more actionable on if, if we want to make some decisions based upon that pass when it's included. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I think it'll help us hone in on some things. I, I, I hesitate to, to dive too deep until we have a, something closer to a final tally. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fair. What do you recommend? Um, so when I look at these priorities in the survey and uh, like, I remember we, you know, we took kind of a broad overall township wide priority, but as far as the DDA con is concerned, only some of these kind of fall within our area. I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, but you know, lack of a village area is huge. But sure. what do you recommend then um, as far as flushing out the best way that we as a DDA can get, it seems like it's, that's headed, that's kind of one of the few areas that we can focus yeah. on and are going to be focusing on. So well, I, what, do, what was say, the best way to get the public, public feedback as far as what do people want as far as a village area? So I, I'm, I think we are barring some dramatic shift in the last couple of weeks of this survey. We are, that's going to be a top priority and a top concern, which means it's going to be the, the, uh, the subject of a focus group. And it's going to be brought up in our final public engagement event towards the end of the process. So we are going to be able to start getting uh, more specific feedback. What do people mean by that, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there, then, and that's that is an important question, because do they mean what Ada Village has gone through? 
do they mean something more, um, you know, more subtle than that? How much do they really want you guys to invest in this um, and how? So we're, we're going to definitely, that's uh, something we're going to delve into the public, both in that focus group setting and in targeted survey. So we're going to get more detailed public feedback on that for sure. I also think that if you walk through the township priorities, um, you know, and say like, okay, which of these affect the DDA or are the Pleasant Hill acting the DDA to do something? Obviously, number one, but um, number four, the community gathering place, number five, existing parks, number six, development in appropriate areas, number seven, uh, enhancing streetscapes, number eight, the Thorn Apple River, number nine, creating more parks, number 10, pedestrian, all of those. With, at least within your geographic boundary, fall into your category. And I'd actually argue number two about not raising taxes falls into your category too, because you have a dedicated funding stream, right? Um, so there's, um, I think that there's a lot that they call and find to fall into this. And as we put together that next round of public engagement, we're going to um, combine some of these that are similar and or that scored similarly and, and put them together as, so a, a downtown area, you know, that also goes along with things like enhanced streetscapes. It also goes along with pedestrian. Also. So like, you know, that may be one category in the end. Mm -hmm. so. so will the DDA have a direct role in making suggestions regarding what we think might be good focus group topics? I mean, and that I, I guess I'm leading up to the question of what can we do exactly. to help this process, you know, between now and March? Sure. Um, I'd definitely be interested in hearing that kind of feedback. Um, certainly, we're going to provide you the final survey report, including the cross tabs and all of that, for your February meeting, as you guys requested. Um, I don't have my calendar in front of me. If I can be here, I'd kind of like to be at that meeting, and then we can have that discussion. And that's that's then that becomes the answer, right? Well, I'll come and talk to you guys about it, and you can say, "Hey, we see this. We want to we want to know X, Y, and Z from the public." February fifteenth. February fifteenth. All right. That is the third Tuesday in February. Is that it should right? be. Yeah, it is. My phone's over there. I, I, yeah. I think I, I'll 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 check and I'll be in touch with Grace and we'll I I would like to be here if I can. Okay. If so, not, if not, maybe we'll have someone else from McKenna come and you guys can have that conversation. Excellent. So coming up with focus group topics is a task that we have. What are some other things that this DDA can do to help support the process as these items are being finalized? Sure. I think at this point, I would almost give you kind of a homework assignment. And, and that is as DDA board members, you know, you guys know the DDA area, you understand your budget. <laughs> um, you've seen your planning documents from the past. Start thinking now about your priority projects. And I really think it should be thought, thought of in terms of projects because um, one of the things that we've that, that we was, has been communicated to McKenna is that this strategic planning process needs to result in on the ground action that people can see. So they know that the public engagement was worthwhile, that it was listened to. So let's start, so I would say, start thinking now about what your, as DDA members, what your top priority projects individually are. And we're probably gonna do some with our workshopping to try to, bring all that out and compare what's where's everybody at and how can we get all on the same page here um and and think about that in the context of you know what we're hearing from the public which obviously right now is this broad like we want a better downtown well what does that mean start if you folks start thinking about what that means that would be very helpful so are you looking for specifics from us like we for example a couple of years ago we had already fleshed out a plan for the um, community gathering space. Yep. Do you want that, or do you just want the information that we've done that, or do you want us to identify that as a priority? Like, how uh, so, granular do you want us? Yeah. To what I'm asking, actually, what I'm asking is, each of you, how high a priority is building out that plan? Okay. And you know, is that plan still what you want, or would should it be tweaked? Right. So maybe your maybe your first step in the strategic plan is to tweak that plan to get it where you want it, and your step two is to act is to do that, right? Um, or you might decide, well, we did that great plan, but that's actually like priority number five, because our first priority is 
I don't know, to put a roundabout at 28th Street in Cascade. Just, just like throwing things out there. I'm not, I'm not recommending that as a planner or not recommending that as a planner, but because there's positives and negatives to that one. But I'm saying there may be another project. And I know, so uh, the master plan has some projects in it. And so it, it depends on what you guys, that's why I'm starting saying, start thinking now, what are like the top three things as DDA board members, you think the DDA should be doing. Um, and then we'll run them by each other and then we'll run them by the public. And that's how we'll get our strategic plan. I think I saw Steve's hand. Yeah, I did. Could could you um, help me better understand the weighted score? Sure. Well, yes and no. <laughs> um, basically, the way that those scoring questions work is that respondents are asked to label and rank their top three or top five issues. And then anything that wasn't in that is just rated as the system just rates as zero, right? So. Um, the weighted score, I, I, I tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure how the system comes out exactly with that number, but it's basically telling you the number of times it was listed and then whether it was listed one, two, or three. I don't, but I'd have to, I'd have to talk to one of my colleagues about exactly what these numbers mean, but we can have that answer for you next time if you want. Okay. Because I see that they're, they're put in numerical order in the sense of yeah, high, high, such as the township priorities with the, creating the downtown village at a 14.25 by 0.26, the raising taxes dropped to number two. So I'm just kind of curious as far as, and I knew that it had to do with the aspect that um, uh, the residents and mm -hmm. business owners and, and so forth are able to pick from a variety um, of choices. Um, and so I'm sure that, yeah, it all plays a role, but yeah, I, I can figure head, out. It's all I, gotta add to a hundred and it doesn't, you know. No, it's not a percentage. I, I, you know, I'll have to, I'll, I'll have to look into exactly how this is calculated. That's okay. Thank but you. yes, I can, obviously higher is better. Closer together does mean closer together, right? right. As where you see, there's some spots where you see like a very tight split or a very a much bigger split. Mm -hmm. That really does mean like there is a gap there, right? Between, so in the, in the priorities, um, well, you see number nine and 10 are tied. Right, but then there's a big drop to number eleven. So I think it's worth noting there's a big drop to number eleven. It's not it's not close to number ten, but number ten is very close to number nine. So that's that is accurate. But the exact math to get there, I'd have to check on that. Okay, thank you. I have another question. If if oh Sandra, yeah, oh, go ahead. Um, will part of the planning process involve a meeting with all of the different boards and committees? collectively sitting together to have a conversation about priorities? Um, we didn't, we haven't talked about doing that. We certainly could. I would love to do that. I think um, that it will help us align across the different boards. I mean, and we each have our different priorities, but I think it makes sense to make sure that we're all, you know. Each other hears those. Here, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sir, I think we can add that to the schedule. I, I would envision that being towards the end of the process once each individual board and commission has finalized what their individual priorities are and once we've completed all the public engagement. That's that's fine. I know it's been helpful in past years to, to have that meeting and we haven't quite done it every year, but it is nice to be able to sit around the table and talk about how the different pieces might fit together. So Absolutely. I think especially with the aspect that the DDA, we have a boundary. Right. Yep. that we have to stay within geographically mm -hmm. as far as our projects and so forth, where from a township perspective, yeah, there's just there's so much more area to cover. Mm -hmm. So if we can figure out how we can work with some of the other boards and so mm -hmm. forth, and if we have the same vision, then we may be able to, to get more done um, than originally. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. absolutely. And, and this process also may result in some recommended sort of tasks or actions that are actually more procedural. Sure. Um, and so it may be, I, I do know of communities that have that sort of all together, everybody, every board and commission, they do it annually, right? The, um, and so that may be a best practice you guys want to start emulating. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the kind of thing that we can talk about through this process. Excellent. Very good. One additional, I'll go ahead, Sandra. I'll see you'll always go, be you like, no, oh, you go ahead. Um, one question is when you have in parentheses downtown village, did you define what downtown is? <laughs> because people's right. definition of that can vary where it could intersect very closely to a gathering place in a sense. Mm -hmm. It's where people, 
a centralized location where people go, where it can have mix of retail. I think you understand where I'm leading. I, to. I totally agree with you. Um, I think that's in a, a couple answers to that. One is that we'll, I want to sort that out with the public during the next round of public engagement for sure, because mm -hmm. I want I really do want to hear from people what they mean by that, and I think that's important for you guys. The second question though is I, I'm, I'm curious to hear as we go through our workshop in a couple months, what does that mean to you, right? As downtown development authority, what does downtown mean to you? Um, particularly because your boundary, yes, includes the village at the bottom of the hill. It also includes this facility and its adjacent, you know, green space. And then it includes all 28th Street all the way to Patterson, which, you know, is that a downtown? I don't know. So let's, I think I'm very interested to hear that from what you guys, um, we, we intentionally left it ambiguous for the, the purposes of this, the survey because kind of wanted people to answer that question for themselves. But now you're right. We will need to get a better answer to that from the public and then ultimately from you guys. And the source of some of that confusion might be that our, our district is divided into four geographic areas. And so yeah. one of those areas is called the village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so some people might be referring to the entire area as the village and some may be using it as an, a term for another sure. part. So I agree. Yeah. I think that it's really great that you're going to be, you know, doing a deeper dive into those. Yeah. And as well as more subtle questions, like does, is Burton part of the village, right? Does it go that far up Cascade? I don't know. So yeah, I mean, right. you know, how far up the river in either direction, things like that. Um, as well as what exactly does a downtown purpose should a downtown serve in this community? Um, yeah, I think those are all, uh, we want to, we're going to really want to get at that given that this is such a high priority for the town, the public, we want to understand what that is that they want. Is it, is it worth, is, it just seems, well, I'm interested in the DDA's thoughts and also your thoughts, Chris, would it be helpful while we're waiting and still collecting feedback and as the survey wraps up to send out for the township to send out just to the business list that we have a real simple questionnaire what are your issues, concerns? How can we help? That kind of thing, or is it is Let's, that not part of the? We survey? can roll that into the next phase of uh, of public engagement. It kind of is part of this survey, but our we only have seven percent business owners. Now, what we could do, what we will do, is um, cross tab by business owner versus resident, and see if there's like a what the business. It's a much smaller number, but what the business owners are saying. If it's something totally different, we'll have that. But I think that. Um, a sort of business survey as part of the next round of surveys that we're going to do. Different questions because different concerns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I kind well, of totally assume that, that that's a very good thing. point because I assume that would be part of what they were doing. I'm just curious because I'm not a business owner, but Steve, Renee, you know, Scott, I'm just curious to hear from you guys and other people who are actually business owners in the DDA. Mm -hmm. So if you want to speak up right now, feel free. But no pressure. <laughs> What's the question? What's your thoughts in general? As a oh boy. Uh, for me personally, in general, as, I, as I'm looking at the map here of our four geographic areas, and as Chris asked, you know, the, the theoretical, what is, what is the downtown? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I look, personally, I look more towards the village area, I guess, as the downtown. And, and I refer back to, you know, as a kid, when we would go downtown, it would be, where the businesses would be in three or four blocks and everything would be somewhat compact and mm -hmm. um, sidewalks and you would, you would visit these establishments. Um, whereas I take a look all along 28th Street out to Patterson there, that's, that's not a downtown, that is just a commercial um, strip. Um, yeah. So, you know, for, for, for me, and as I take a look at some of these priorities too, you know, as far as with parks and those kind of things, I don't even know if we have a park within our DDA. And I don't, we do? Tassel Park. Oh, oh, oh Tassel Park. Museum yeah. Gardens Park. Okay. Yep. Is um, all of Tassel Park or just where the, like the entire Tassel Park is in the DDA? Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, you know, I've always, uh, well, way back when, before they built behind the restaurant, uh, as far as the uh, condos and so forth, I thought it'd be great if we had somewhere out here in the, in the township, you know, like a, a, a sports complex. Mm -hmm. Granted, we have the MVP um, and we've got Lions Park up there on, on uh, Thorn Apple River, but, you know, for, for baseball or softball tournaments in the summer, that would just bring people into the mm -hmm. area. Um, and granted, 
speaking from a business perspective, it brings people into the into mm -hmm. the area. Mm -hmm. As a resident, they may not want all those individuals, but it fills <clears throat> the hotels. The hotels have to eat, they have to shop, they get gas, and it just it just helps. Sure. So yeah. that's my personal thoughts. And that's just so you, this is meant as a good thing. Yeah. Um, you're not alone. And that's something the parks committee is, it, it, this will be helpful, I think, to kind of have everybody, because that may be something that we've got limited space within the DDA. But as far as like parks committee, it's been brought up, um, for example, like there's, you know, the airport, they have um, that vacant land. It's actually part of the airport, but they do long-term leases on and it's flat and it's kind of like we're 36 street dead ends i mean you exit like the expressway. the airport viewing park or oh, no. oh you know when oh, you exit the expressway or 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 this okay. is premature but that's one thing oh, that's I come up too. that yes okay. um well, and it great, helps the businesses access. hotels great access and it's kind of i don't want to say wasted space because that's not the right way but it's flat land that that is limited in what can it can be used for with mm -hmm. the flight yeah. paths yeah. and then there's a huge i think people a lot of people think there's a lack of fields and that we could use it and that's kind sure. of so yeah, no. so in a good so, way i think that's this like, is mm -hmm. yeah. yeah this is what we should start thinking about and these mm -hmm. are actionable mm -hmm. things in place in you know there's some um you know the realistic implementation strategies and things like that so uh, yeah i think that's i think that's great i think the fact that we don't have like we don't have it defined is part of the problem so i think if we could define our space and then mm -hmm. we don't have a walking community here we don't have anywhere we can like, park and walk from building to building to building. Yeah. We'll never have what Ada has. We don't have the space. We don't right. have the property. Yeah. Right. But we we have like the quaint little Hallmark shop, yeah. like, you know, the Hallmark, like feel, we could make it really quaint and cute and yeah. small and a destination. We just are not a destination. And that yeah. bridge across the Thorn Apple, that is something that's outside of the DDA's uh, district. But at the same time, if resident, it could be in other areas, mm -hmm. priorities yeah. and other kind of work with the DDA. So yeah. I have a question for Sandra because I, I can't remember whether this was discussed previously, but I asked my kids to kind of give me their feedback <laughs> on this. And one of them said, and the others agreed that if there was a walking bridge over Cascade Road, did we go down that path when we talked about complete streets? Like a a it, bridge, a pedestrian bridge over, and did it get nixed or? Oh, over Cascade Road. Over like Cascade down, Road. Um, we did. I think the problem was it would take up so much room. Okay. It would need so much, um, you know, property to to get it at an angle and at a grade that it wasn't so steep. All right. I, I didn't, pr I, I told them that, that I thought we, that it was already something that had been considered. Yeah, we talked about a tunnel as yeah. well. Okay. So, and we will yeah. want an engineer in the room at some point, I think, on some of this stuff. But I think these are all, you know, if we get at the issue is it's hard to cost cross Cascade Road. One of the differences between what you guys have in Ada is that Cascade Road runs right through the middle of what you have, whereas M21 Fulton skirts Ada and they don't have to deal with that level of traffic, right? right. Um, but there are some opportunities, you know, there may be some opportunities with the shopping center at the end of 28th Street that is actually a lot of land there and can that be reconfigured? So there's all sorts of ideas. And what I actually is really inspiring to me working with you guys as well as other communities is that their big ideas get thrown out and yeah, there are impediments to them, like engineering impediments and stuff like that, but people are coming up with big ideas and it's possible here, right? So like, let's, let's, uh, let's keep that attitude up, I think. Yeah. What if, when I think of the village area, and this is just one person, but I think of the opportunity and the, the Chow Hound Dollar Tree, that whole big shopping area, but mm -hmm. it's all, I've heard a lot, it's well, it's private. Is there something that, but to me, there's, shouldn't there some, there's opportunity there, right? Like it would be complicated and involve public private partnerships, but it's, so this is, you know, we're, this is kind of a, a rabbit hole and would be mm -hmm. something if we said, hey, this is a priority because in order, we don't think we could create the walking environment along Cascade Road that we, that we want, then how do we create that walking environment? Um, it is possible, other communities have done it, to retrofit a shopping center like that into something more like a downtown. It would take very um, active and almost aggressive action by you guys. It would take you guys purchasing some property and, and, and including potentially purchasing some or all of that facility and then reselling it, right? So that's that's pretty intensive, but it's something that's within your purview, right? Uh, you know, if the, if the private sector, if the owners would work with you, if the private business owners would work with you, um, but you could, 
if you would wanted to work through all of that, create a situation where you have a little main street, you have developable parcels, you have DDA owned and maintained parking, which again, is, is a, would be a commitment, but would increase the value of the other parcels and may help you make your money back and bring in a developer, et cetera. And that's how you can kind of create a village. It's aggressive. It's like a five to 10 year process. But if this is something you guys are interested in, this could be step, well, step zero, maybe like we're saying in this part of this, we're going to do this. We are committed to the kinds of investments that we would need to create, uh, to, to overcome the, the um, sort of the physical impediments by creating something ourselves. So if this is something you guys are interested in, it's certainly something we can do. Uh, and the strategic plan, like I said, is not even step one, it's step zero, but committing to it is huge because if you're not committed to do something that big and visionary, it's not going to happen. So, right. Uh, That's, it's definitely something to, to keep in the mix. I mean, I think that the problem we've had in the past is that we haven't had willing private owners mm -hmm. who wanted to even get on the dance floor. So yeah. we'd have to, you know, I don't even know that throwing money at the issue would change their minds, but it's certainly something worth exploring. Yeah. But I think it might be a combination maybe of, of money, but also vision. There may not have been a cohesive vision that you could see. Right. Because I, I think what, uh, Steve, you got to go first. So that's good because it's easy to say, I agree with Steve. But, uh -huh. um, <laughs> but, but all joking aside, what I'd say is I, I think Cascade doesn't have a centralized place where people want to come to what's going to draw people in not only within the community itself the borders outside of it um and I, and if there is a great vision for it but the potential is is that the business owners of those properties will realize the upside of hey i'm not going to have vacant properties i'm going to have more customers more traffic for those businesses mm -hmm. and long-term tenants there's there's a balance but i think the vision is what we haven't delivered and if we have this amazing vision of what the future is going to look like and how it's going to align, especially with the DDA, with what our goals are, um, our objectives and our purpose, um, then it might be much easier to sell. Mm -hmm. It might be much easier to sell if we've got a barrier of if people feel a village is when people congregate, not only for commerce, but the, also for the community aspect of being together. Well, that doesn't mean cars going by at 50 mile, 55 miles per hour, then the Kent County Road Commission, there might be a further discussion of the vision of what we're trying to do mm -hmm. and how that vision, the two don't meet up. So I think we have some selling to do, but we also have to paint that. We have to paint the picture with that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And we've got great, like, we don't want it. We, we can't be Ada, but we don't even need to try, right? Like if, you, if you're authentic and we've got some great the river, right. we've got great opportunities. And as long as we kind of embrace what we have, I think we'll be better than that. <clears throat> I agree. Just on a smaller <laughs> scale. We'll be cascade. That's yeah. right. I yeah. think that's the key thing that, yes. to take exactly. with it. It's, yes. We have great assets. Let's leverage the assets and let's be us. Ada can be Ada. <clears throat> right. So, we don't have to be in competition with right. each other. Yeah, no. Yes, no. That's no. Right. Yeah. Comparison's like the thief of joy. Like yes. we're gonna be, <laughs> right. yeah. we're good. We're, uh, but we're, Scott, what about, I just don't want to take it like are you, how do you feel about that if nothing but cakes is farther out towards cost like you're in a trickier spot no but they're all choices right as a business owner i chose for my business to be there that that's the the choice if being next to the river in a downtown feel was critical to my success then i should have picked something down this way these are these are choices you make as a business owner when you go decide this is where i'm going to retrofit a current existing property mm -hmm. with my concept or if i'm going to build new mm -hmm. um, i think we have to take that step back of the we we're thinking not short term we're thinking long term what's going to continue to bring people to this area it, as a business owner i will benefit because people will come off that highway um, and they will engage, right? But what I need, I've made my decision and I'm in that, in that area because that's good for me. I think there's this opportunity of, can you home grow more businesses and have that local community feel that people associate with our area with things that we could do here? Mm -hmm. That may draw new businesses in, um, which again, aligns with our purpose and 
and what we're trying to accomplish. And it will, in essence, if there's more businesses, more places for people to engage and more people want to live in the community, which will help home prices as well and rents and everything mm -hmm. else. And it still gives, we still have that, one of the great things about living here is that we're so close to all those businesses on 28th Street. But if we can get the quaint kind of downtown village area that is hard to get, but possible, you kind of got the best of both worlds. Well, I think it all comes down to a walkability factor. Yes. We, we want to be able to create a more walkable yeah. space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's a cause and effect to all of this yeah. that the qualitative is going to have to drill down mm -hmm. on because you can't have quaint, walkable and then, and then I can get to work in three minutes. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, That's right. It's going to take you five minutes. Without but planning. There will be yeah. more congestion if you slow down traffic. Yeah. So there is, there's trade-offs to these visions, but it has to be presented eyes mm -hmm. wide open. And also, do you have, you know, the residents, will they buy into that? Yeah. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> because we're going to ask them what they need. On, yeah. on these yeah. questions mm -hmm. that you're going to get to on qualitative, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, absolutely. It won't be another round of quantitative, correct? No, we need to, we, we need, now it's hard. We're, we're going to have to figure out how we design the survey because it's going to be hard to, to sift through results if we're just having people write paragraphs. Right. But yes, we, we do need to make sure that we are clear on trade-offs and make people make those choices. And so we understand how, which, how they'd like to prioritize. Right. Um, and then there's the, the phase that is going to be very important that maybe during the strategic planning process, but maybe a task listed on the strategic plan to do afterwards, which is some of the physical planning. For instance, if you're talking about wanting to make Cascade Road more pedestrian friendly through the village, and we start talking about specifically like what is driving traffic through there, right? Where are people going from and to, and can we find them another route? Right. Okay. Well, you have some advantages in that area because you do have old 28th Street. So you actually have two ways to get up the hill, which I think is important uh, as a planner. Right. So I think there's so there's some options there. I, my understanding is the road commission has been is doing the typical road commission thing, which is we're fine with that if you're paying for it. Right. <laughs> um, and I don't know if that's true or not. But that's that's kind of that was kind of what I heard, um, which is better than some because some road commissions just say no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um, so if you want to do something like add on street parking or something like that. So there's, um, yeah, we're going to, that's what we're going to have to get into as we go back to the, the public is you want a village area. Are you willing to add more time to your commute if you live east of the thorn apple in order to do that? Um, you know, are you willing to park on the street to visit businesses to parallel park? Right. Um, which, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, in a historic downtown environment, that's just sort of is what's there and all the businesses clamor to be next to parking spaces on the street. But in like your environment, like I'm sure the business owners around you would be like, no, 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 we can't make people parallel park, right? So this is the, the type of trade-off that we're going to have to see. Uh, hopefully we get some good discussions with the public and we can bring those results to you guys. Terrific. All right, Sandra, you've been, you've been so patient. <laughs> Sorry. Just really quick. No, you're fine. Um, we just also have to make sure that um, any tasks or topics are consistent with our TIF plan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we may need to look at that at some point and decide if we need to do an amendment to the TIF plan to add some of these, um, you know, tasks as well. So we tried to keep it fairly broad when we amended it in um, 2011, but just something to keep in mind. So agreed. Have we ever defined what each one of these areas of the DDA are yes. in terms of like just typically like this is more of a retail environment um, in a high volume area versus this is more of a village area versus yeah so and it was I'm looking at it, and, uh, and I apologize that's okay go to the map. Yeah, I've got the colored map, and I, they are defined areas. Do we have the TIF plan, Sandra, yeah, yeah. attached here? And, and that's offline. I can brush up on that, but just make sure that each one has its strong identity. So there's of what some descriptions of each. I don't know that it, it is as detailed as what you're right. talking about in terms of... Um, more statistically driven 
you know, but it, it, had, it does have a description of each of those areas. And I did send that um, in the uh, oh, email with the packet. And, and I'm just kind of thinking of it of long term as we're attracting new businesses to the area and what have you. It's like how we represent the area and what the vision is for what we're doing going forward. Well, and even this, I mean, is a lot has changed in these areas since sure. 2000. 11. 11 and then I mean I know there was some edit in 2014 but right. so that might need to be updated mm -hmm. I put a little star next to that yeah and you may want to talk about you know some of your programs or starting programs at the DDA level that are specifically business support right that are or they're encouraging businesses to do things that are furthering DDA goals, like improve the architecture or the landscaping of their business. And that's the kind of thing that 28th Street businesses can benefit from, as well as, you know, village businesses. Other questions? We really appreciate you coming tonight and giving us this information. I found it very helpful. Um, and I also appreciate the homework that <laughs> you gave us. Can we just have it one more time? Yes, your homework assignment, which you have two months to complete, okay. uh, <laughs> uh, is to think individually about your top three to five priority projects you would like to see the DDA undertake. Now, they can be as specific or as general as you want them to be. Um, because If I were king for a day. Uh, yeah, I mean, if the DDA board was reduced to just you and you had the entire budget, <laughs> like, like each of you individually, what would you do? Um, because then I kind of want to, I want to then bring those out as a group and compare them and see where if we if something rises to the top, right? Or if not, then we need to discuss what rises to the top. So that's the homework assignment. Terrific. It's a fun one. It is. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome yes. to stay if you'd like. <laughs> Um, um, and if not, that's okay too. <laughs> uh, only if you think I provide some sort of value. But, <laughs> uh, but I do appreciate you having me. We are uh, very excited at McKenna to be working with Cascade Township on the strategic plan. And um, we're excited that this, the way this project is going to move forward and to get to interact with all the boards and commissions and such. So thank you so much. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, moving on appropriately to Article 5, we get to talk about the money. Um, I asked Sandra to put this on our agenda because it is, you know, January, beginning of the year. So a little recap about our funding process and also to give us an update about the 2022 budget, which I think we discussed in um, November before it had yet been approved by the board. So. Sandra, please take it away. Great, thank you. Um, so we can go through this quick little um, informational guide if you want. I know we went through it um, at our informational meeting uh, last year, but really it just talks about, there's a map in there showing all the, uh, the different districts or the different um, development areas, if you will, of the DDA. And, um, and it talks about tax increment financing, what that means, uh, which is really how we are funded. So, um, which means we capture a um, portion of the um, growth in taxes on each parcel in the district. So um, that goes into our, our budget, into our fund, if you will. And that's how we then go and make improvements to the different areas in the DDA district. We can only spend those funds within the district. We can't go outside of the um, of the boundaries, so um, I can. Any questions on that? Nope. And I don't I know that you need to get into gory detail on the budget either, since we have the document in front of us. Is this the the budget as <clears throat> so approved? This is the approved budget, correct? So we do have right now um, approximately um, two million. Uh, dollars in the budget. So at some point we will have to um, start spending some of those funds and hopefully the strategic plan will, you know, help us determine what direction we want to go. So does anyone have questions about the uh, budget that was included in the packet? The only question I have is if we don't spend the money, say we want to keep saving it, is there any reason that the, the money then goes, I think there's been some discussions that other people could apply for those funds or something could happen. Um, we're penalized just because we may have this really strong vision 
And it's just going to make sense for us to defer those investments to say 2023 or something along those lines. So I believe that we have five years that we can save. Um, I'll have to double check with the state requirements, but I think we can save for about five years. Um, but we have to show that we have, you know, a plan in place and that, you know, we are saving for a specific project um, and reason. So we, we can't, can't just, save just for the purpose can't. of saving. Right. We have, but if we right. allocate it and we say, we're going to do this great big project in the village in 2025. And so we're going to, you right. know, this is where that money is going to go. Mm -hmm. Then that's something that's that's, yeah. that's good to know. And that right. we're being fiscally responsible to just uh, that we aren't incurring a lot of debt to go after a lot of the, these goals. Yeah. I do hate to bring up one thing, but um, maintenance and repair and improvements. Mm -hmm. Um, it's budgeted at 70,000 this year, where last year we were, looks like we spent about 17,000 and the year before was 35,000 or the, the original budget for 2021 was 35 and we doubled. Do you remember what we put in there? So, um, some of that is just for general maintenance, but we also have to, uh, this year in 2022, we are scheduled to reseal the stamped concrete That's down right. in the... Okay. Thank you. in the village so mm. um that was i think we thirty five thousand dollars approximately yep. so okay. gotcha. yep good question other questions all right um moving on then unless you have something else on that I do not. to discuss and consider the flower bed landscape rfp which was included in your packets Yes, thank you. So you did see this once uh, at the, I believe it was a November meeting. You gave me some suggestions. I did include those in the RFP. And uh, so we wanted to get that back to you just for your final review uh, before it gets sent out. So um, I guess let me know if you have any changes. I did put a date in there of... Um, uh, yeah, providing everybody likes what they see tonight. Um, I did put a date in there of March 1. I thought if we got this out by next Tuesday um, or right around there, that gives uh, companies about five weeks to work on this and get the finished product back to us. So um, anyone have any questions, comments, further edits? I, I have none. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. Aren't these already there? Aren't they already located in those spots, those yellow dots? Correct. Okay. Yep. That's where everything's located. Uh, they are all irrigated. And then obviously the landscape bed by Sitgo, we'll have to talk to them. Uh, there is a little portion of that uh, flower bed that is on their property. So we'll just have to work with them. Um, Do you anticipate any sort of resistance from them? I don't. Okay. I don't. All right, other comments or questions? If I could just, I did start to put together a, I've got a list of eight landscape companies. I am more than happy to take suggestions. I can tell you who I have. Please do. And, um, and if you think of anybody, you know, over the next few days, certainly let me know. Um, there's thousands out there. <laughs> so um, I do have Daylily Floral, um, RRR uh, Lawn and Landscape, who contacted us last year as well. Uh, Thornapple River Nursery. Caterberg Verhag, Rooks Landscaping, Rockwell Earthworks, uh, which is who Ada uses uh, for their uh, landscaping, Monsma Landscape, and Pro Cut Lawn Care. So um, again, you don't need to tell me tonight, but if you are, you know, looking around or if you have somebody that you'd like me to add to this list, I'm more than happy and we can send it to, you know, I unless you have a number that you want me to keep it at, I'm happy to you know, send it to what? as many as possible. How many of those are located within Cascade Township? You, um, quite a few of them. I tried to look right yeah. around this area. So um, the majority of those are, if not in Cascade, just outside of, of the Cascade area, so. Perfect. Did, did you have Thornapple on, was Thornapple on there? Thornapple River Nursery, yep. And Rooks was not on, Rooks is on there? Yep, I put Rooks on there as well, yep. Other questions or comments? Do you need anything further from us? Do you need us to vote on this or? If, yeah, if you'd like to please. And then um, would someone like to move to um, empower Sandra to send this RFP? I'll make a motion to approve the RFP. I second. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you very much. Thank you, we will get that out and hopefully we'll get some great responses. Terrific. Um, articles seven and eight are to discuss projects in tactical urbanism and discuss DDA goals. And I brought them up together because they both seem to relate to the update that we received um, during public comment. So Sandra, if you'd like to, I, we, there's some materials in our packets with some suggestions that are more sort, more short term things that might help us form our list of goals. So take it, take it away. Yep, thank you. So we did talk about this a little bit at our November meeting, uh, just discussion on projects as well as some tactical urbanism ideas. And um, I did check with our attorney. He said, as long as um, the project or event that's on private property is being used as for a public purpose, if you will, then uh, we can go ahead and spend uh, TIF dollars on um, those types of projects. So um, we should, however, if we do something on private property, we should get some type of agreement, easement, whatever um, the project calls for um, with that property owner. So again, I just put um, the couple of tactical urbanism um, ideas back in here that we talked about at our uh, November meeting. I just gave a real brief synopsis and um, just as a reminder, tactical urbanism is just a low cost uh, approach to projects. It's a way to basically try something out to just guinea pig something uh, before you spend um, a lot of money on you know, some permanent infrastructure and so forth. So um, that was um, you know, doing something with food trucks, pop-up uh, cafes, retail, and the parking lot down at the uh, Thorn Apple Center, which is down at Cascade Road. And, 28th Street uh, DNW Center was another uh, possible location. Um, some type of expanded outdoor dining and pop up cafes, and then protected bike lanes. Uh, so, those were discussed at the November meeting. Um, it was also talked about putting a or planting a real tree down at the Museum Gardens uh, property, uh, where the um, old tree was located, where we put the um, you know, fake Christmas tree in the wintertime. So I did get with Thorn Apple River Nursery. Uh, they went out and they looked at the space and uh, they felt that that would be a great spot for an eight to 10 foot Norway spruce. So for comparison, I know it's a little different. It's an artificial tree, but um, just for comparison purposes, when that goes up, that is a 14 foot um, tall tree. So they are talking eight to 10, which obviously will you know continue to grow over the years too. Um, Scott felt that, um, uh, cost installed for a tree of that type would be right around $775. Um, so I just wanted to pass that on to uh, the board if that's something that you are still interested in. And then certainly something else that we talked about was regarding holiday lighting. And um, you did ask me to prepare an RFP. I'm still working on that, but I wanted to get um, some ideas, see if anybody had any suggestions after this past holiday season and um, hopefully you all had a chance to look at the, the lighting and the decorations that were up um, so that we could, you know, make any changes or additions or um, for the 2022 holiday season. Um, Bronner's is also having their uh, holiday sale until March 1. Um, so I did receive an email from them. And just for example, I know we seem to, um, we like the snowflakes quite, quite a bit. Um, so for 20 snowflakes, um, the different shapes and so forth um, with the, um, after holiday specials, we would be looking at just under $8,000 for 20 of them. So if that's something that the DDA is interested in, we can uh, talk about that as well. So. Are those the snowflakes on the lights? Or the, which snowflakes? Uh, the snowflakes have lights on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That are on the lantern light post. So the snowflakes go at the top of the um, street light poles. Yeah. I think they were doing every other or every two lights mm -hmm. with the snowflakes. Yeah. Well, was there ever a plan? Um, so if we buy more, where those would go? Are they like to fill it? Because right now they're alternate, right? So would these be to fill in? Or to go further the alternates, down. or would it go further in another direction? 
I think it's really what the DDA is oh, interested okay. in doing. Um, I was just if, wondering if there was, yeah, there was you know, never like really, I think at one point we had talked about, you know, expanding further down 28th street, mm -hmm. um, with the decorations. So, um, if that's what the, you know, board is desiring, we certainly can follow up with that. If you guys want to keep it, you know, more in the village area, if you will, um, you know, we can do that as well. I don't so. think we can go particularly wrong in getting some more because it, I would love to see us go farther down because I love how it looks. I, I just think it's very charming and, you know, welcoming and seasonal. But if we decide through our strategic planning that, no, 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 we want to focus it all in the village, then we can dial it back and make a more dense display in the village and change approaches. But I'm, I'm in favor of purchasing some more that we could do either of those things with. I don't think they would go unused. For the right. Way. Do we have any, do we have any in reserve in case any, like we go to put them up and the lights don't work on them? <laughs> I mean, we don't. Okay. So that's maybe another good reason to, yeah. you know, get a few extra. So it's 20,000. So. No, um, no, it would be uh, just under $8,000 8, for, for 20 dollars. of them. Yeah. Further discussion? Are, are you looking for a motion from us? Since I, um, motion discussion, and we don't need a motion right now on that. If you want to talk it further about it, we want to, you know, I, I don't know that we had pitched anything, any of these up as making a final decision tonight, right. but they were kind of ideas of yep. how we might frame our mindset moving forward toward doing things short term in addition to long. What are people's opinions on a tree? On the real tree? Yeah. I like that idea. I, I for I like real anything like real real vining, real wreaths. I mean, I think they're it, especially if we could use them in local, that makes them. You know. Um, yeah. So my only reservation to plunking in a real tree is I think we have the garden designed over by the museum. Did we not? So I'm no gardener. So I I just want to be sure that whatever we put there isn't going to interfere with the plan that we had in place for that area. Yeah. And not knowing what strategic planning is gonna do, I also don't wanna plant a real tree mm -hmm. that we then have to yank yeah. out because we're doing something else along right. that yeah. area. But I, yeah, it could take ideally, like I'd love to have a real tree. Toughy. Like the whole tree could be toughy at some point, right? <laughs> right, I mean, I, I would love to put it in a real tree, but I'm reluctant to pull the trigger now to order it and move forward with it until we know a little bit more about what we're gonna do right there. Mm -hmm. And we have time. I yeah. mean, if, if they wouldn't, they could plant at any time during the summer or even in the fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it's something we decide we want to do this year, but. Wait, do we already own a tree right now? An artificial one? For we that do. spot? Correct. Yes. Um, is it in good shape? Or? It is. It's fairly oh, new. Okay. Um, yeah, it's in good shape. We wouldn't be at risk of being tree free next right. year if we waited right. for right. too long. I think the only time sensitive this uh, decision are the snowflakes, right? Agreed. Because the sale ends March 1st and it's subject to supplies. And it's so right. I, I think. And that's, you know, we could, if you want to ponder that, we've got, you know, our, our February uh, 15th meeting too, where you could, you know, make that final decision. And so. I don't know that we're, I mean, we all seem to be of the same mind. So if someone would like to make a motion to purchase the snowflakes, I think this would be an appropriate time to do it. I'm not anti-snowflake, but I'm not excited about the snowflakes. I don't know. I don't mean to be bow humbug Grinchish. But we're kind of vested in it already, I think. We already have so many. Like, I think we can't go back now. So, right? So we got more. Uh, I'm in the right? same camp. <laughs> the same. We, we kind of decided we're doing snowflakes. <laughs> Maybe this RFP, um, you know, if we find a land or um, uh, holiday lighting company to help, maybe they'll say, all right, you have 50 snow. What if we did, you know, this over mm -hmm. here in the park and we put them all up over here? I mean, you make a real good, they point. may have some other ideas mm -hmm. for us. So. Let's, let's, let's perhaps delay that decision okay. then because it, you're right it may be that they say you know snowflakes are very 2021 and we need to look look to the future <laughs> or definitely i am the last that. person who should be weighing in on anything regarding well, decorations and, uh, i would be interested and in, maybe you could do this really quickly sandra is how you know how many of those alternate pools are there if we bought 20 of them would those snowflakes then 
fill those poles so that we have a snowflake on every one of the light poles in this, if we're going to call it the village area, you know, to, um, I, I mean, I, okay. I think, I think it is nice. It sort of announces, oh, you're in this center of, now if we can just get some great shops and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and I think conversely, if we want to then stretch it out and, and, and include more people in the township and we have, in an area, yeah. how far does that get us? Right. We may find that gets us like 15 feet down the road well, or it yeah. gets us a quarter of a mile to a half a mile. How far apart are those light poles? Do you know offhand? The, in the village? Yeah. The village, I believe, are 85 feet apart. And then as we go down 28th Street, they get, um, they're more yeah. spread out. Right. So let's maybe there's snowflakes in front of Culver's. I don't think so. No, you didn't, no, get, these you are didn't get a snowflake. Oh, you so, did, snowflake you did not make the snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas, the the Christmas cheer did not make its well. way all that far down. We've got all, the, all the holiday custards. Very so far so away from the, the snowflake. snowflakes. You didn't even get on their snowflake radar. No, there was oh, not even a thought. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you're like a little elf shop in there anyway, so I feel like you're just... Well, no, like might be nothing but no, it's the last much. thing they need is another light, <laughs> right? I'm still, that. still working through not being included, okay. but it's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll well, I don't want to deprive anyone of those feelings. <laughs> um, let's let's put this on a future agenda for discussion, okay. and then maybe in connection with the RFP as you're putting that together, we can consider how how much that will involve snowflake consideration. <laughs> you only have one little chance to make an impression, you know, as a village. You know, like Ada did the. What did they do? The reindeers. They did the reindeers, the, the full size reindeers that on every corner. And they're oh, barely they remember the this. Yeah. And um, I mean, but like, so our pools do kind of matter, yeah, you know? I mean, they yes. really do matter what we do. So there's got to be like something that's magnificent. That's all we have right now, you know? <laughs> I would border on a nauseous. Yeah. 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 And, right. I mean, and hopefully this company will help us with right? that, whoever we. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So agreed. Did you see their giant Santa in the window of one of their buildings? I don't remember that. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's where the Lake Michigan Credit Union is. But then I don't know if it's Ada or if it's a private because it's a, inside the building. But right. it's a massive Santa that's just. I didn't see that. I did not. On the see second floor. Or... So it's inside, but it's just a huge. Yeah. See, and that to me would be freaky. But okay. oh, I was not. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Again, I am the last person well, yeah, to have a voice TV. in decorations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, as to these other projects in tactical urbanism, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit of two minds as to picking a direction for these things. I mean, I love the idea of using tactical urbanism to test out some of the potential projects that we might want to incorporate into our action plan. I mean, we're going to be asked to do some things and, you know, I'll use the bike path idea. If, if the survey re results come back and say, we need more bike paths, then certainly tactical urbanism will be something that we can incorporate to test that out, to see how it works, to see what we need to do. I mean, I, I think that maybe we should give some thought to what we might do, you know, in the summer, given that we're, the, the timing of the strategic plan is that realistically, I mean, we'll, we'll still be planning as summer comes along. We're not gonna be ready to act on any projects, but we could, try to give ourselves some ideas by using these, this tactical urbanism, you know, to create a little gap. I love the idea of creating a space like an outdoor dining space or a gathering area for people, you know, and create it, define it so that people will see it and, and go there and use it because then it'll help us understand whether there's a need for that there. So, but I'm not sure where we can go with that today. So I'm interested to hear what other people think about that. Again, from a short-term perspective, not a, you know, a very long-term like this will be forever. Like what? And may, maybe it's something to to think about and then come back to February with your further thoughts on where we might go with it. I love the food truck idea, and I think it'd be so cool to do because we're not we're not going to get the, the good food trucks in the in the summer because they're going to be in Grand Haven and Traverse City. But if we could do it in the winter with like igloos and oh, use like nice. the following, you need a bar to anchor it. You need to have to like an actual bar so they can go in and get a, a beer and come back out or, you know, but that would be so cool to try to do that with like in the winter months 
and maybe have ice skating outside in the parking lot or I don't know. I mean, I like the ice. We, we, you know, have talked about the ice skating idea. I think that would be huge, particularly, yeah. I mean, we, it was a little bit of a missed opportunity given what happened at Rosa Park Circle with there being really no yeah. outdoor right. skating, but yeah. That is something that is missing over here. Mm -hmm. There is no outdoor skating mm -hmm. area. So I agree that would be something that would and be nice to bought those igloos too. Like, I mean, I they got them handy for COVID, right? I mean, so. My only reservation to the food truck, and I love food trucks, but my only reservation is that we will need to be respectful of our restaurants in the district. We don't want to draw people away from our businesses in the district by bringing in third party food trucks to provide the food. You know what I mean? Well, Culver's could have one. They could, they could, they could, they could participate. They could. I mean, right? We just met with Clint, but we won't. But we can. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about that uh, with the metro crews because the food trucks. Didn't we have a conversation about that? I don't uh, remember. I don't think so. But but there again, and for like the metro crews, you have a um, contained um, event. event going on. Yeah. Yeah. And so there again, even if there was food trucks that came down to the polling area mm -hmm. and there was a contained event, mm -hmm. um, I, I know the president of the food truck association here in, in Grand Rapids. Um, and, you know, I, I could talk to her to find out, you know, what, you know, where, why do they pick, why do they go where they go? But, but of course, yeah, what does it take to, it's going to be, I got to know there's going to be people there. There's going to be a lot of people in a short mm -hmm. period of time. So I can, I like this though, like to have like a food truck rally event. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Where it's not like an all the time thing, but it's you pick a day. The purpose yeah. is, is food trucks. Yeah. And it's off season for the, the vendors. Mm -hmm. they're, they're like they're off season. I think winter is a great time for us to find a niche and yeah. to plan for next year. But and, and it, season. To me, there's got to be something going on though. I don't know. Yeah. I don't but know. But the ice skating down there and, and the live music, ice skating. Alcohol. I'm, I mean, have, have to have, it has to have a bar. Like, what's the place in Traverse City yeah. that they have the bar and the inside, and then they have all this outdoor seating around? You know, what I'm talking about right downtown Traverse City. It is the coolest thing. And they're open year round. Well, is it miss. an actual? Is it a restaurant bar? It's a. It's a. It's a basically like a bar with. It's open, and then the food trucks are all around it. So they share. Oh, like they share amazing. a patio area. And they have a, what are the liquor licensing with the issues with something like that? You know, I wonder what the city's involvement is. So I think it would depend, you know, if you had a restaurant that was willing to maybe host, um, okay. mm -hmm. you know, or where they, they, I think the restaurant or, rents out the, uh, the parking lot. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. So it may actually, um, or also be a great opportunity to do a rally and then to bring in some people from outside the community and um, show them what other, you know, brick and mortar restaurants and or stores we have as well. Um, you know, I, I understand they're going to the food truck rally, but um, it might be a good way to highlight, uh, you know, our other existing businesses also. But it's a way of the grape. It, it, if it's an ice festival, winter fest, or mm -hmm. something, it's right. you mm -hmm. sometimes like down Grand Rapids mm -hmm. invested in those art installations yeah, for right. a period of time, ice sculptures. There mm -hmm. are ways in that does draw people in mm -hmm. yeah um, you get a mix right if you have food trucks you have the people who are consuming right there and their people have come down now they're going to go out for dinner they're going to do some shopping and there's there's varying i think every high tide raises all boats um so i think there's a way to, to pull it off and maybe test something and then does an installation like ice skating does that continue to bring people down right or into the area so practically speaking probably we can't do any kind of ice skating installation for this winter. <laughs> right. Winter is long, but not, not quite that long. It's very weather dependent. So. It is, it is. It's yeah. got a good long stretch of cold here right. now. We, we but, do, but. Yeah, so that. Now, I know that we had talked about the synthetic ice situation, right. which might be an option, but that's a little bit more permanent, so. Right, <laughs> although, um, uh, that is something you can, you know, leave down for, you know, five or six weeks, and then you can pick it up and put it away for, um, you know, the seasons as well. So but I think it's just, it's just not weather dependent, which right. is the beautiful part of it. There's so. a great opportunity also to kick off the holiday season too, and have that, and it draws people in with uh, the lighting of the tree and, yep. and everything else. 
And then there's, you know, when spring comes, it's time to <laughs> move some of that stuff out, but it could have a long life. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of fold this into the next article in our agenda, which is discuss the DDA goals. And I thought, you know, January meeting, kind of a good time to talk about our DDA goals. I mean, obviously we'll be defining some of those through the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. My thought though was we need to, we need to decide whether we want to do any active projects or planning in the interim before we start to implement what comes out of the strategic planning process. So I'm opening that up for conversation, you know, from a practical perspective, you know, because it takes a while to plan things, this is probably a limited universe of things that we might do, but you know, what, what do we want our goals to be in addition to participating in the strategic plan process? What, what else should our DDA's goals be getting for the business, next six months? New businesses, getting new businesses to come to Cascade. Tax incentives for them to, to come and shop. They could see a nice can, plan. Is that within our, can we do tax incentives? We have a couple programs. Okay. Um, or through the state, but yeah. Do we have the ability of doing an offsite um, brainstorming session um, to be able to do it? Because I think there's a lot of opportunity. I know everyone's lean on time and that right. may not be allowed. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I think that it's allowed. We've done it in the past to you know, mm -hmm. have a committee of sorts to discuss a specific topic. Yeah. I think we just have to note, put it then like, provide notice of the meeting and right. minutes and stuff, but we, I think we can definitely do it. Yeah. It wouldn't be as if there'd be any decision-making. It would be more brainstorming so that we're not sitting here to go through all this. So uh, this is a clarification question. Yeah. On when you say goals, mm -hmm. are you talking project goals? Like, because you're saying six months. So are, are we sort of honing in on, well, these are some sort of shorter term projects that we can actually implement. You know, we have the opportunity to spend the money and implement, or are you saying goals like establish what, you know, this future vision is. No, okay. I don't, I don't think we can do the latter because okay. we have to wait and see what comes from the strategic right. planning that's, process. Right, that's why I was clarifying. The reason so. I put it on, frankly, I put it on the agenda because I didn't know we would have the strategic planning conversation here tonight. And so my thought was, okay, we need to, we need to be doing something productive as our DDA. Um, and, and to do that, we have to start kind of broad and general, you know, like the, the goal of getting new businesses to come to Cascade is a good goal. And it should, I mean, it's, it's our purpose basically. So that's something that will help us when we make decisions about projects, uh -huh. which is something a little bit more granular. Nice yeah, yeah nice right. level down. Right. Open conversation though. So I, I just wanted to get the topic out there. Okay. Something that we're working on, um, you know, in-house is updating the business guide. Uh, for the community. And um, then we are also working on putting together a series of um, short videos um, for two spotlight businesses. Um, so anybody that has signed up for our business spotlight, um, we will be going out, reaching out to those uh, businesses. We'll be going out, putting together a, um, a short video, about a minute-ish video um, uh, of those businesses. And then, you know, sending that out on uh, all the platforms and, and uh, website and newsletters and so on and so forth. Um, so just, I think that's just a FYI, we are working on, on that and for one this of the year. Things that I was, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, me. I was just going to say, I'll probably be contacting a few of you to, um, to start with first, so we can uh, guinea pig you a little bit while we uh, get this process uh, up and going. So um, go pick up your phones. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say a couple of things I've been reading what municipalities have done of one is they've decided to a lot of them have been infrastructure projects to attract the businesses to it, not just the advertising in the area, whether it is attracting high speed uh, Internet access to an area or making Wi-Fi very public to to the area. It could be commercial space, commercial kitchens at a the subsidized rate to get people up off the ground to do restaurants or their own, you know, their cookies or whatever they are. There's a lot of different 
you know, tactics that you can do that attract people and ideas to the area or rental of office space to be working here with the hope that the business gets up off the ground. Um, so I think there are certain things that we can't support for certain reasons. And then there's other things that we just might be able to or to attract the funding or the grant to be able to execute that will attract businesses. But I think it's going to have to take some brainstorming and also benchmarking some great ideas that are already out there. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and one of the things that I was thinking of was whether we want, ironically, we're not going to need to do it probably anymore because it, it'll be folded into the, the survey process, but whether we needed to do some sort of economic forecast or, you know, a, a look back, look forward for our district, which I don't think is something that we have. I mean, there's, there's more greater Grand Rapids area, but I don't, I don't know whether it would be helpful or, or necessary to do something like that, that we could then use as a marketing tool to say, we are, we're going up, we're, we're, you know, businesses are coming here and they're staying here and this is a desirable area. So, but I don't want to bite off. That might be a bigger project than we want to embark upon. And right. depending on what we see in the survey, it may be something we can cover through strategic planning. And we also have to find assets that we have in the area. We do have a lot of hotels mm -hmm. um, per square mile versus some other areas. We do have an airport that um, that a lot of people may opt to stay downtown, but you may give them a reason to stay here. They have to eat at places. They have to. There's ways of we leverage the assets, and then we attract more businesses as well by creating some infrastructure too. I think there's a a varied way of doing it. So perhaps as another homework item, think through whether. I, I don't know. I don't know that we want to schedule another brainstorming session before the February meeting, but maybe as part of your homework for the strategic plan, think about whether we need to incorporate some, in addition to projects, some specific goals in more broad scope that we want to explore as part of strategic planning. Does that make sense? It does. Other thoughts on that? I hope I didn't confuse the issue. I got a little twisted since we had that great presentation, it kind of addressed the, some of the concerns I had that I wanted to put on the agenda. That's good. All right, moving on to the election of officers. Um, so Sandra included the current officer slate in the packet. I'm the chair, Steve's the vice, Renee's the secretary. So is anyone else interested in holding an officer position? Let's let's have a conversation about it. Are there um, so I know the D or the planning commission has um, <laughs> two years two. limits for you know they have to do a rotation two years for vice chair and chair and then next person comes up and you just same people can keep serving just can't do more than two years consecutively. Does the DGA have anything like that or do we I have did not see any restrictions. No, we do not. And it's it's you know typically at least in my tenure on the DDA people have been reluctant to serve. <laughs> I don't know why. It's really not that difficult, especially if you're especially not the chair. Right. <laughs> but it's a but it's a good experience and you you do get to dig a little bit deeper if you're the chair because preparation of things we can definitely call it. But I want to be sure that people who want who may want to have the experience know that they have the opportunity to do that. And if you would like to be, Believe me, I wouldn't mind having left to do. If someone else wants to be chair. Do we want to rotate? Steve, do you want to? Uh, this is not the year for me. Okay. I've got another restaurant under construction. Oh, congratulations. Or, or condolences. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. And, and if no one has a strong preference, we can consider voting this current slate in again for another year and then make a different decision next year. I was, I'm in this similar camp to, to Steve as well. We're going through some expansion and new locations. So, um, so unless it's absolutely necessary, I'm, I'm in a good place by not being a chair. Well, let's, let's clarify then that the, and find out whether the existing officers are willing to serve another year. I think that's a better question. Right, so I, I'm willing to do it again. I'm willing. 
I ask it. Would someone like to make a motion? Wait, we're missing someone. Who else? No, we just have no, uh, just so chair, true. vice, and secretary. We don't oh, have no, a treasurer. treasurer. Okay. Who are we missing tonight? Is it just um... Rishi and um, Dr. Siegel and our new and the new Mr. Reynolds member? Yep. I'll make a motion to um, approve the say to continue another year with the current members officers. Second. <laughs> And add a big thank you at the end of that. Yeah, a very big thank you. You're welcome. And thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Let me, sorry, I lost my agenda here. Um, any other business? Contact list for members was passed back and Got forth. Got it over here right now. Okay. So if you haven't seen it and eyeballed it to see whether you need to update it, please do that before you leave today. And do you have information? I forgot to look for our new board member. I do. Yep. I spoke Absolutely. with him the other day. So good. Yes. Um, next meeting, February 15. Um, don't forget to do your homework before that meeting. That's exciting. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm the only geek that likes homework, apparently. <laughs> Everyone else seems very upset about this. But. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Any other business, Sandra, to report? Um, no, just uh, I know it's uh, everyone's super excited about it. Chick fil A was approved last night at the Planning Commission. So, um, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> this will be my bankruptcy right now when my children realize this, that there's a Chick fil A. What's the timing? Um, so, uh, what um, Brian told me today is they um, hope to be operating by 2023, as Brian said. Um, I don't know if that meant January or December, but uh, 2023. So, and, that and was... where's the location? What, just so, if you want to know the oh. what did they yeah. say? Uh, they'll be at the Sanford Home Park. There you All go. Right. Thank you. Um, so that is down by um, where the old macaroni girl was. Oh, the, okay. Right. Yeah. So not a separate entrance okay. off of. No. No. All righty then. What did they yeah. decide that Patterson Ice Arena, Jessica, that they wanted a bunch of, um, they wanted to be able to host a bunch of. Uh, they had, they uh, approved the uh, Patterson Ice Arena and most of them, they're changing. So Patterson Ice Arena had in their PUD ordinance that they could not have um, alcohol or liquor, beer, wine, liquor at um, their facility. Um, and they have recently uh, applied for a liquor license. So they had to go through and amend their PUD ordinance. And at the same time, they made a uh, number of other requests uh, to amend uh, within the ordinance at the same time. So, so has that process completed? So I believe it just has to go to the uh, township board now for. So will we be able to get beverages while we watch hockey games? Or uh, I don't think, not? I think um, there was a caveat that you could not do it during high school games, um, but yes, sense. during other it games. Does. So yeah. now I guess suppose unless the township board um, chooses to, um, you know, strike that out, but. Public comments are welcome. Not a pill I'm going to die on. But. <laughs> Sandra, do you know how much um, vacancy, if any, is in the Centennial Park? Closet? I actually have a meeting with them Thursday. Uh, so that was on my list to ask them as well. Um, last time we met, we they meet quarterly. Um, they felt that they were um, all doing fairly well. Mm -hmm. So, but. Well, as I was reading through the uh, the TIF plan and taking a look at some of those thoughts and ideas that we had are within that park area. Um, mm -hmm. I remember one um, where there was interest in reaching out to like GBSU or TRCC to see if they wanted like a offsite campus exactly. or conduct a few classes or something like that. And I thought, oh, what a great way to, again, to possibly utilize some of those buildings and um, yeah, have some, have some additional people in the area there, there again, that would have to use the gas stations, restaurants and so forth right. um, in the community. And so yep. I was just kind of curious. Yep, I will, uh, I will check with them this week. So we did also have a new karate uh, studio move in um, a couple doors down from Pit Stop oh, over in the DW Center, yeah. so. Oh. Doing a lot of work at the uh, soon to be car wash. Yes, yep, Tommy's car wash. And that's going to be a cafe as well. There will be a separate building with a coffee shop over there too. Yeah. 
Do you think it would help or for um, Steve and Scott, if there was an additional patrol officer, I guess you're a little bit out of it, but and Renee, but um, that was more focused on like the hotels and kind of that 28th street stretch. I know Scott's had some. It, I think it, it's been an area of focus and over time, I know for the Kent County Sheriff's Department, um, I think a, a larger police presence wouldn't be, I wouldn't push back on that. I think it, we've had a number of hotel properties move from being a problem child to getting better, but it sounds like there's a number of them right now that are problem children. If it's a better way of saying it, um, that it's, I, I think it can only benefit us. In, in what capacity do you think, Grace, that the um, Sheriff's Department, what, what, what do you envision that they would do? Just patrol through the parking lots? So I was or... talking to the fire chief today because they are the first responders and they've had a lot of, you know, overdoses. Overdose, overdose, and there was a shooting there this weekend at that new Holiday Inn Express uh, by Meyer, and it's the new one. Wow. Shooting and then the, the someone showed up at whatever the, the East Grand Rapids Lodge it. Um, they think it was the same one. So for Cascade could hire, we have the money. Speeding's been a huge complaint. Speeding growth, all that kind of that stuff that goes with growing pains. But then those hotels just suck an absolute ton of um, calls, tons of calls. Like we get, it's funny, we're part of that East Precinct with Grand Rapids Township, Ada Township, and Cascade Township. Mm -hmm. And so the three of us, the three townships collectively go in together to pay for, it's called the East Precinct, to pay for specific um, numbers of deputies and all that kind of stuff. And it still works out best, but we have the probably the need more so than the other townships and then also the money to, but within that precinct to hire an additional patrol. Mm -hmm. And what the fire chief said was, um, because Cascade's easy, right? We're kind of like a sleepy community. It's easy on and off the expressway. Those hotels there are just, mm -hmm. people know, we're not gonna get away with it in, down, in Grand Rapids, but we'll go up to Cascade. It's really close. Mm -hmm. It's easy off the expressway and we'll do stuff there. And if there's a sheriff's deputy that's kind of, focus more in those different parking lots or in that area that, well, maybe it's not so easy to do Cascade, we'll go somewhere else. I, I think it can help. I mean, we've had to engage Kent County to help us out with incidents at least three to four times this year that it, it required a call to 911 or, or just to their non-emergency line. So I think it's, and you're definitely getting people who are staying for more than a night. So you have a long-term stay. So if you had dedicated resources, they would be able to identify if it is the same individual or individuals that there's some consistent issues with. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's the consistency of patrols of certain individuals, I think could help us too. Um, but I think if, if anything, the Kent County Sheriff's Department has worked extremely hard and has partnered really well with the township mm -hmm. to be working on that area. So if there are more resources, man, that would be great. And I don't know if it's COVID really, if it was a problem. I mean, I know the, the, the rates dropped during COVID to keep people, to keep the hotels and that was, and I don't know how much it was like that before, or if it's really just a product of that. I just don't, I have no recollection of the yeah I think there were always a few problem hotels before pre-COVID um I think COVID certainly exasperated um that but yeah that, that's my understanding as well I mean again there's management shifts that have been mm -hmm. made at a number of the hotels which has driven that as well mm -hmm. and then there's also stimulus checks that have impacted it for certain periods of time so there's a lot of variables rolling into it, but it was a, a huge issue when COVID first hit in for the first, I think, eight to nine months, um, because all the rates were dropped significantly just for the hotel owners to keep the lights on. That's my understanding. And so being proximity of so close to the highway that there were a couple things that drove the the escalation of issues. We even had a, a murder. Um, there was a shooting where someone was murdered um, in within the township as well. Yeah, I didn't know it was such a, I mean, I guess it just keeps coming up. I didn't realize it was, it's kind of been a real ongoing concern. Do you need the, I'm gathering this is outside the DDA's purview, unless you tell 
plus otherwise that we need to add something to the agenda for this? I don't, I don't know that. I don't think you need, I mean, okay. just feedback, just nice to hear feedback from okay. business owners. Yeah, I think the, the key message I can give is Kent County Sheriff's Department has been phenomenal in partnering and the township has worked closely with us with our concerns. And if there are additional resources, I, they're very welcomed. That's the biggest message I can give. And if there's something going on down that way, have them pull over anyone speaking. I guess that's what I right. said too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's they what can I run said a loop. Too. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, can't you just park it for a while and clip some people? And he's like, "What do you mean by clip?" And I'm like, "I just need to pull them over." Like, I've gotten pulled over. Yeah, it worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a new driver as of yesterday. So oh, it was right by Manchester Hills. I totally yeah, they, deserved it. It was. Effective. <laughs> it was effective. <laughs> so, slapped on the wrist. And it was very, it was it happens. It happens. <laughs> One yes, more thing, you. really quick. Sorry, Please, I know we want to get out of here. Um, we did have a really quick meeting uh, with the Rapid yesterday. That contract, as you know, is coming up uh, in May. And so they need a decision by um, March uh, 15 um, as to what we are doing for the next contract. Um, for the rapids. So we should um, put together some type of bus committee and get those meetings started and, and start having those conversations. So they need a decision by March 15. So that's our yes. meeting. Yeah, that's that our is our meeting. meeting. It's our meeting day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so we we'll have, have two, two DDA meetings. Two DDA meetings. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. That's all I have. Anyone else have any other business? So, hearing oh go ahead well, I'm sorry so with that said as you're saying that you need to get the bus committee meetings so, three meetings so to speak or whatever yeah we um, can put that committee together yeah because um, I know that there were some names for that committee and so forth so are you going to to determine a date and a time to try to gather people yeah together? Ben and I will put our heads together okay. and we will um send out either a doodle link or yeah we'll get something okay. going on that so perfect all right Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. um, other items? All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I second it. You make the motion? I make a motion. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we're adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, everyone. Everybody stay safe. Appreciate it. Me too. Because all our kids get.